Hey, GNS, here we are again in the in the Numan Bar Valley, in the upper reaches of the Narang River. Gorgeous place. We were here a little while ago doing the natural bridge thing. So we're up here today because there is a mineral resource up here. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. And there's a mine. That mines it. This stuff, it's called perlite. And it's got a thousand and one uses in modern industry. It's essentially silicon popcorn. Amazing stuff. We'll talk more about that in the video. But the real surprise is it comes from this stuff. It comes from obsidian volcanic glass which is amazing fully natural process now one of the uses for it is in brewing this is the archer brewing company over at wilston awesome spot it really is great beer and this is um stuart martin the owner of the archer brewing company having a beer with some cane farmer from north queensland can't remember his name but anyway they don't use perlite they use a much more modern system and a much safer system called lenticular filtering we got to get into this. It's actually way more interesting than you'd think, I promise. If you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And you know what I'm going to say. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Rocking with T-Rocks. He's the man. He'll show you what it means. From our mystic shores to outback sands. Rocks, he's your guide to our ancient land. Well, folks, here we are above the Rabina Shopping Centre. God, they've got a big solar array there. Look at the size of it. Now, we're just zooming down here a bit because that fast food lane there is the site of a lot of Grego's fantastic food adventures. You've got to catch him out. Greg's Kitchen, amazing stuff. Anyway, let's get moving. Where are we going today? Well, we're going to the Numan Bar Valley, which is just over here a bit in the Gold Coast hinterland. You can see Mount Warning poking through behind there. There's Springbrook. There we go, Numan Bar Valley. We'll head down. There's a prison farm down here, by the way. Yep, I think people try to break into the place. The barbed wire's on the wrong side of the fence. And that white patch you can see there on the side of that mountain is the mine we're talking about. And this just down the road. There is the uh, the old natural bridge. And here it is. This is where they're mining this perlite. So this is a large deposit. It's a fairly large deposit of perlite. And they're not mining it today, but they have been mining it on and off over the last 30 years. The buildings are all still there, and I'm sure they will mine it again when the price is right. Unfortunately, it's only worth about 50 bucks a ton nowadays, so... But that'll change. That'll change. Let's have a look at the geology and its situation. Well, folks, here we are in the Numan Bar Valley, natural bridge there. The red dot is where our mine is. You can see Springbrook Plateau there. And here's the mine itself. You can see the rock face exposed. The buildings are in the shade. There used to be a helipad there at one stage. So here's the geology. Uh, it's all about the same age, 28 million years. This stuff in the with the pink finger is the Beachmont Basalt. Up here we have the Lamington Group. Again, more basalts. And the nice big brown bit is the Binnaburra rhyolite. And there's the mine in and on the edge of the Binnaburra rhyolite because this is a rhyolitic formation. Here's the mining lease related to this mine and its access road, ML5915. It was actually registered 1977, this current one. And uh, it's valid till 2041, so someone's got it. At what stage it was Queensland Perlite, then it was a mob called X-Cut Tunnelling. Dunno. It's not active at the moment, but it's private property. You just can't wander in there, and I respected that, and I didn't. Well, folks, 1961, nobody there. Just a, just a dream. Uh, 1980, yeah, they're starting to have a bit of a scratch for sure. They're getting this established. Remember 1977, they registered their lease. And of course, by uh, 1995, they've got a mine going here. And in 2000, it was in full swing. So there you go. That's the progression of this mine. 
Well, folks, quick geology flying for you. Beachmont Basalt, that little red stripe is a piece of the Chinky Creek uh, conglomerate. It's the only little piece. It's 25 kilometres away. It's crazy. Anyway, if you look down there, you can see the mine dug into that side of that, the edge of that rhyolitic dome. And uh, no surprises there, but anyway, it's interesting to see. Folks, this is lovely fluffy perlite. All expanded and looking wonderful, ready to go in your garden or filter your beer. But we know this comes from this stuff, obsidian. You can see the rind forming on the outside of this obsidian. And this is only a few thousand years old. So let's have a look at an, a, a very large flow of obsidian. Well, folks, this is an obsidian flow in the United States. Everything you see here that isn't green is obsidian. Now, this thing's only a few thousand years old, so but it's already starting to de decompose. You can see it's white on the surface. This is because it's starting the process of de-vitrification, which turns it into perlite. So you see a few real chunky bits there where they've just broken off. It's still nice and black. So down in the Numanbar Valley, we had an obsidian flow around that great big rhyolitic dome, and it's over 28 million years has completely turned into perlite. The big thing is obsidian is mainly silica, very high silica, extremely rare to get obsidian around basalt because there's not enough silica. So folks, this is the total alkali silica chart for all the different magmas out there and you've got felsic and mafic and ultramafic and whatever. But everything to the right is high silica and rhyolite is the highest. And this is where we get obsidian. It's not Vince, I've changed my name. What? It's obsidian now. Obsidian? Yeah, Obsidian Blackbird McKnight. Now this is beautiful, this stuff. The ancient people used it uh, for many things. And obsidian is one of the rocks, and there's not too many, that are nappable. In other words, the ancient people could work them into cutting tools. And they did. And they used it all over the world where obsidian was available. The Aboriginal people used it too. There's just not a lot of obsidian in Australia. Because you don't get really, really old obsidian because we'll find out why. So here's another beautiful look. You mentioned someone laying in you with this thing, and then you're no good at all. These things are sharp. They've actually done modern surgery with obsidian scalpels. It works. So why? Well, obsidian is metastable, which means that as long as you leave it alone, it's fine. But you put water on it, the water starts to work its way into the stone and starts the process of devitrification by basically hydrolyzing it. It takes on water. And here's a, here's a modern uh, Japanese blade. These things are awesome, but useless. If you slap that sideways on something hard, it's just gonna shatter, as you can imagine. Now, when the process of vitrification is complete or nearly complete, you've got perlite. So this is obsidian that has soaked up water. And it looks like this under a microscope. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, this is after it's been expanded. So they, they stick it in a furnace at about 800 C, drives off all the water, and you end up with expanded perlite. And it's not uncommon. Uh, this is where it is available in just northern New South Wales. This stuff is all over the place. So, how do they mine this stuff? Well, as you can see in this mine, which is in the United States, when this stuff occurs, it occurs in very large deposits. Uh, if this obsidian's been under the ground for a few million years and it's been exposed to groundwater, it will all be hydrolyzed and it will be now perlite. And the best way to mine it is like this. This is a massive open cut mine in the United States, in Utah. And there is a mine in China that is absolutely an entire mountain of this stuff. And I will show you the worldwide production figures for uh, perlite because it's a very useful mineral. We're about to have a look at the uses of this particular substance. And it's insane what it is used in. And Australia produces, well, we have two mines, one at Chiligo in North Queensland and the other one in Numanbar. 
and the one in Numanbar is currently closed. So we now have one mine producing perlite in the whole of Australia, in Chiligo in North Queensland. Yeah, we, get, we use a lot of this mineral. Where does it come from? Just guess. Just guess where most of it comes from. Of course, China. We have reserves of perlite all over the place. Why don't we exploit them? Oh, it's cheaper to get it from China. Which, of course, is the plan by the Chinese. These people are industrious, they are hardworking, and they are not stupid. And they are just turning all of our mining industries off one at a time when it suits them. Anyway, let's have a look at, let's just have a look at the uses of this amazing material. Because it's, there's just nothing you do in your life that this doesn't touch. Let's have a look at it. As Greg would say, let's go. So once you've got your nice fluffy white silicon popcorn, your nice expanded perlite, and you've got your thousand tons of it, what the hell are you going to do with it? So let's have a look at what perlite's used for. Now, you can see here we have construction, we have fillers, we have horticulture, filtration, and other applications. And there's some very interesting other applications. So right now, let's start and let's have a look at horticulture. You know, plants and stuff. Hey, Julian. So it's used to improve soil structure because it just does. It's used, therefore, in potting mixes. It's fantastic for seed starting and propagating cuttings, which it's used a lot in. It's used a real lot in hydroponics. It's also used as a soil conditioner, a moisture retaining substance because it holds moisture. And it's also used as a slug deterrent. If you put this stuff around your plants, all those little sharpy angly bits in that silica popcorn, well, the slugs don't like that. They really don't. Now, in industry, in industry, it's used in filtration. I think we touched earlier, it's used for filtering beer, get the fines out of beer, but not just beer, all sorts of liquids, foods, because it is food safe. If it's made to be food safe, it is. It's non-toxic and it's uh, very antibacterial. It's just silica. I want to touch it. It's used in the biochemical industry and it's used in the laboratory and the uh, medical field. Construction. Well, perlite's used to make lightweight plasters. It's used to uh, make ceiling tiles. It's used in mortar ground up used in water, providing insulation and structural stability. It's also used in making lightweight concretes and those blocks you see, you pick them up, you think, oh, what's this made out of? Perlite's usually part of the mix. It's also a fantastic insulator. So it's used in making um, ceiling tiles, roofing and insulation materials for walls. Now, it's used in cosmetics. Not really my subject, but I'll just take their word for it. It's a gentle exfoliant, and it's also oil absorbing. I'm reading that. I don't understand that one. Cleaning products. You know, the old Vim doesn't scratch your stuff. Perlite, it's a silica, very fine silica. A uh, light abrasive in cleaning products. And in other industries, and this is the interesting bit, it's used in foundries. It's used as cryogenic insulation and it's also used to pack explosives. Now I've seen perlite in explosive guys' vans. I didn't know what they used it for. I probably should have asked them. Anyway, this stuff has got a million and one uses in our society and there's many others I haven't mentioned. Yet, we don't seem to be mining it ourselves. Now perlite which is everything you see in this video here in front of us, except for the caterpillar, of course, is hydrolyzed and de-vitrified obsidian 
So no obsidian, no perlite. Now obsidian is mostly a rhyolitic magma product. You can get obsidian in basalt fields, but it's quite rare and there need to be some very special circumstances because basalt is fairly low in silica and obsidian is not. So this is a non-renewable resource like coal. They're not making it anymore. They probably are, but in very small quantities. And we are scraping mountains of this stuff away. Okay, we all knew it was going to be China. 47% of the world's perlite is produced by China. 20% by Greece, 16 Turkey, the USA, 13%. And the rest of the world is made up by that other chart. But look at New Zealand. 20% of 4% is coming from New Zealand. Aussie doesn't even get a mention. Not a mention. Now, volcanism has something to do with this. Australia has volcanism, but it's mainly on the East Coast and a lot of the country is very, very old. So, yeah, there is an issue with that. But we still do have deposits of this stuff and they're not being exploited. Anyway, let's have a look at another chart that shows us another look at the world consumption, which, by the way, is 4.1 million tonnes. Now, perlite is very light. 4 million tonnes of perlite is our absolutely say metric crap low, but that's it's bigger than that of perlite so this is the world chart but in the production in thousands of tons so china at at fifteen hundred thousand tons is the biggest by mile turkey greece usa even look new zealand's poking in there with twenty thousand tons of perlite as i said before twenty thousand tons of expanded perlite is a lot of perlite Well, T-Rocks, where can I get me some of this stuff I hear you say? Well, the easiest way is obviously to dip down to Bunnings and buy a bag of it. It's worth bugger all. But if you must find it in the field, you've got to be near a rhyolitic volcano. And in Australia, here they are on the East Coast. There's uh, quite a few. And, uh, oh, if there's obsidian around and it's not that old, the ones in North Queensland might be a bit new, but all the others, you could find perlite. And we know there's perlite on the other side of the Mwilumbar volcano because the New South Wales Mines Department have mapped it. Now, is there more perlite on the north side in the Numanbar Valley or the Beachmont? Who knows? I don't. This chocolate stripe through the geo map here, that's all rhyolite. And the interface between it and the basalt under it can contain obsidian and therefore perlite. All these white cliffs, at the base of these cliffs, there could be perlite or obsidian. I don't know. Nobody's had a decent look. So why do the Chinese produce the most perlite? Well, because they dig the biggest holes. This is the second biggest mine in China. The other one is twice this size. So yeah, that's why. So folks, the beautiful Numanbar Valley, the beautiful Narang River, home to one of only two perlite mines in Queensland. Currently inactive, but the perlite's still there. The demand is still there, you never know. If you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And you know, geology rocks. Keep rocking. T-Rocks out. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? So many assholes, so few bullets. I am a little disappointed.